Yo, what's up everybody? Cardboard Moses with you welcome. It is now time for 2018-19 Hoops Basketball. Five box break number four. Alrighty. Let's get to it. If the okay, so this is not the first time I've heard this. But why do keep why, why do people think Tom Brady's gonna retire if he wins a Super Bowl? The way he's been playing, he could play at least another three, four, five years. So why would he retire when he can keep winning? What's up, Fitz? How's everything, my man? Really? Carmelo signing with the Bulls? Is he that desperate to play? He was still signed to the Rockets. I thought I thought he was a. I thought he was released. I thought he was a free agent. Well, so much for trying to win a championship, Carmelo. Ain't going to do that with the Bulls. At least not this year. The Heat got a game coming up in about 20 minutes. The uh, Miami Heat playing the Boston Celtics. That's going to be a good one. At least I hope it is anyway. Good luck everybody in this break. Miami is a very mercurial team. Some days we play really good. Some days not so much. The purple variation. I do not, uh, Savage, if you're talking to me, I do not. Clint Capella to uh, 2018 Rockets. Not really, Savage. If I had to pick a favorite player in the NBA, I would say Damian Lillard. LeBron James, 2018 Cavs, I think that kid is just super underrated, and the guy's just a beast. Well, be specific, Chris Fitz, because there was a lot of it. There was a lot of it. First autograph is Kyrie Thomas for the Pistons. The uh, you, you mean the na the, the non pass interference slash helmet to helmet deal that one. Personally, I, I will say it was it was no CJB. I don't have any football breaks, man. Still don't have any football. All I have is baseball in the store. Steph Curry, 499 Warriors. Um, I will say this, man. 
it was definitely a pass interference. That cannot be argued. It, it was obvious. It was blatant. Should have been called. Definitely a missed call. However, to say that that was, you know, that that was, you know, changed the outcome of the game, the Angela Russell 189 Nets, yes, it's true. But, I mean, come on. Are we just going to ignore the fact that they, they played three quarters of football up until that point? Are we going to ignore that the Saints had a 13-0 lead at home? Like, the Patriots had a 14-0 lead, lost it to the Chiefs, and they managed to win the game. So why couldn't the Saints do the same? Like, And there were questionable calls in, this, in, the, in the Chiefs-Patriots game, too. So my thing is, uh, I feel like the... the, the Tell those like 99 Clippers there. I feel like the refs let them play. Because if I'm a referee in that situation, you know what they say, you want to you you want let the players dictate the game and whatnot. And I think that was a bang-bang play, honestly. Like, it was, it was obvious in the... It was obvious when it happened. It was obvious in the replay. But, I mean, yeah, you got to let the players play too, right? Isaiah Ryder for the Timberwolves autograph there. So, I, I don't know, man. I, I still feel like the better team won in both games, in the AFC and NFC championships. You know, the good teams overcome adversity like that. And and it's not like that, it's not like that pass interference cost them the game. Because they still went into overtime. And people are just going to completely ignore the fact that Drew Brees threw an interception in overtime, which lost them the game. Are we just going to completely ignore that? No, definitely fits. I, I again, man, I, I agree. It should have been called. It was a blatant pass interference. And I, dude, I was watching the game here with the, you know, on the live stream or whatever. And I even said it on the live stream. As it happened, that should have been a pass interference. But to completely ignore the, the first three quarters of football, like, come on. I'm, I'm sorry. But one play is not going to dictate the outcome of the whole game like sometimes you need good luck to win to win a game you know i don't know man it's one of those things where they they really need to change the rules stuff like that should be reviewable uh you know because there is the air there is human error involved when we're talking about referees and not for nothing, man. I've always wondered this, but why do they always have no disrespect to you know, to, to my older uh, viewers here? But why do they always have grandpas playing referees? Like, why can't we get some young bucks in there? You know what I mean? Not for nothing, but older folks' vision is not all the way there. So why do they have these old older gentlemen playing referee, trying to keep up with these freak athletes? Like, come on. And with technology nowadays, you would think that they could do something to, to help improve the, uh, the the game somehow. You know, instant replays there for a reason. You should, you know, those plays should be challengeable. You should be able to review that and you know and reverse the call. Even if you missed a if you missed a penalty, you should be able to to review that. I, again, Chris Fitz, I agree with you, man. But to feel butt hurt about that play, you're just going to completely ignore what happened before that. Like I said, man, they had a 13 0 lead at home. You need to win that game. Period. So I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. The Saints deserve to lose that game. 
Good teams overcome bullshit calls. The Patriots do it on a yearly basis. And that's why they're a dynasty. And that's why they're known as one of the best organizations in American sports. Drew Brees threw an interception that cost him the game at, in overtime. But nobody talks about that. Like, come on, man. If we're, we're going to call it, let's, let's call it both ways. Let, let's, let's, be, let's be transparent here. What up, uh, D. Brown for the Celtics autograph right there? So, yeah, there was a blown call. Okay, for sure. Keep it moving. No, they, 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 they let that get to them. And for whatever reason, Drew Brees threw that interception that cost them the game. But no, nobody wants to say anything about that one. Jalen Brunson, 189 Mavericks. You know what it sounds like, Chris Fitz? It just sounds like excuses to me, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. But that that's just excuses. Excuses, excuses, excuses. They had four quarters to play the game. Again, they lost a 13-0 lead at home. But we're just going to ignore that? That's cool. 99, LeBron James Cavs. No, I, I could care less about Drew Brees. I'm a Dolphin fan, CJB. I'm a Dolphin fan. If it's not the Dolphins, I don't care about you. Plain and simple. So I was, you know, I'm a fan of football, man. My thing is, I just, I hate when people give excuses. Like, oh, man, you know, oh, you know, the referee. Blah, blah, blah. Like, shut up and play. Like, just shut up and play. Steven Adams, 199 Thunder. You know, it's easy for me to say as a, as a you know, as a viewer and someone that's not a fan of either team. So I, I can understand, you know, if you're a fan of the Saints and you feel some kind of way. But again, your team lost a 13-0 lead in the NFC Championship at home in one of the best environments for a home field advantage. But, you, you know, you're not going to come. Like, come on. Like, seriously. Jenna Brunson Mavericks uh, autograph. Another one, you know, Michael Thomas, where was he the whole game? He got shut down. They held that dude to, like, I want to say four catches? Like, come on. I don't know. I, I feel for the Saints, but at the same time, I, I, I don't. I, I have no, what's the word? I, I don't have any sympathy for that. 2018 Bucks. Uh, Middleton there. You know, it's, it's, to me, it's just, it, it's not fair. I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it's 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 a it's 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 a sticky situation for sure. Paul George, 2018 Thunder, definitely a sticky situation. Yeah, exactly, CJB is you know it's it's you know, you know we know what they say about sports. Sports is what a microcosm uh, of society of real life. So it's like you say, CJB, you know it you know it, it transitions into life. You just got to keep rolling with the punches and deal with it. You know the show must go on. So if you're gonna let that non-call rattle you or whatever, then you know you probably didn't deserve to win. The Anthony Melton to 99 Suns. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, my thing is, the AFC Championship was, like, more or less just like the NFC. You know, there, there were some blown calls here or there. The, honestly, the referees, tr like, they did their best to try to give the game to the Chiefs. Like, and I, and I never say that. Like, I never give the benefit of the doubt to the Patriots. But the Chiefs, the referees were clearly on the Chiefs' side. And the Patriots found a way to win that game. So as much as I hate the Patriots, you got to give respect where it's due, man. Championship teams just, just, just overcome. 
They 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 overcome bad you know bad calls, missed calls, blah blah blah. Now listen, go Pats. You know I, I hate the Patriots, but you know I, I call it straight up and I call it like I see it. The Chiefs were de you know the Chiefs definitely had the zebras on their side, and the Patriots overcame that and you know and they won. Even blowing a 14-0 lead, they still overcame and came back and won the game. Why couldn't the Saints do it? And they were at home. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Hopefully in the offseason, the league, you know, changes their rules and allows certain calls to be reviewable. Like pass interference, you know, maybe maybe allow coaches to uh, to throw a to, to challenge a missed call or something. It'll slow the game down, but it it'll at least try to you know help fix the human error side of things. Or just put robots at re as referees and just. And just let the robots call the game. How about how about the, how, the, how about we do that? Yeah, exactly. Go like that. That's that's my thing, and that's the only reason I can think of, of the NFL not wanting to do that is because it will definitely slow the game down. It'll for sure slow the game down. CJB. Just wants the Brown in the playoffs. Not for nothing, man. You know, you guys had the best season you've had in like, in like what, 10 years or so? In this one season, they went 7, 8, and 1. They won more games than they have in like the past five years for the Browns, I want to say. And that's not even an exaggeration. I want to say that's like on the money. So... I, I definitely think that the Browns are trending upward. Um, I think they, you know, I said it earlier this year, I think the Browns will win, are going to win the division next year. You know, if they can, if they can get more talent, you know, they're, they're, they're a very good defensive team. Uh, they, you know, they just need, they just need a coach. I think that's what they're missing. I think they just need a coach. And then I really think they're going to win the division next year. They got all the pieces that they need to do so. Plenty of talent in Cleveland. Torian Prince, 99 Hawks. Uh, Savage, do me a favor and read the listings, man. The eBay schedule is always in the eBay listings. James Harden, 2018 Rockets. The Chrome Break is after this, my man. But do me a favor, dude. Please read the description. The break schedule, always in the description of our eBay listings. Dude, the Steelers are a hot mess. Ravens, I, I I don't know about them. You know, there's Lamar Jackson, huge question mark there, and what he can bring to the table. And the Bengals are the Bengals. You know, no nobody nobody takes them seriously. So I, I think the Browns have a strong strong possibility of winning their division next year and making some noise in the playoffs. Not for nothing, man. They're they're a tough team. They're a tough team. Donovan Mitchell, 2018 Jazz, uh, dude, Savage. I don't care. I really don't. You, you, it, all the more reason for you to read, man. All the more reason. You gotta read the description of the eBay listings. Bruce Brown Pistons autograph, dude. There's so much information in the description. Not only is there the break schedule, but there's also, you know, it, it'll tell you. What you can expect out of the break, uh, how long shipping can take, you know what happens if you don't get a hit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Ben Simmons 2018 Sixers. Chris Fitch, you know how I get down. You know how I get down. You know that's one of my pet peeves. Matter of fact, Savage, you kind of snitched on yourself, man. Isaiah Thomas, 189 Nuggets. You have to be 18 years old to bid on eBay last time I checked. And you're telling me you're a kid? Hmm. Don't make me call your parents. Alvin Adams, son's autograph. I'm just kidding, Savage. I won't call your parents. Not yet, anyway. But yeah, dude, the Chrome break is after this. Just got to be a little patient, dude. All right, two boxes left. Freak of nature. I don't know about that one. Don't make me call your mom, too. This is box number four. So many base cards in this set. Angry Car Collector right after this break. Not to mention Angry Car Collector. Uh, please make sure you read the description of our eBay listings, man. Uh, in our eBay listings, in the description, the very first thing is the uh the break schedule all right angry car collector we always go off the schedule and you can always find that schedule in the ebay listings ah okay angry car collector lol lol either way dude yeah uh, i i i i i i get that question so much it's to the point where like i'm just numb to it I'm just really numb to it. Uh, CJB, to answer your question, uh, no and no. I do not collect and I don't sell cards. Oh, nice, Angry Card Collector. Not sure when you started watching, man, but I'm on box four. And I will be doing a recap uh, at the end of the break. We, we always do a recap anyway. Uh, just letting you know what's up. But yeah, let's see what we got here. Anthony Davis, 2018 Pelicans. About how many more 2018 Chrome Baseball breaks left? Uh, Fear Not Fear, I believe number three is the last of it, which is for tomorrow. But you can bid on that tonight, but it breaks tomorrow. And that would be 2018 Top Chrome Baseball Jumbo 2-Box Break number three. That would be the last of it. Robert Covington, 189 Sixers. Nice. A Luka Doncic to 25 for the Mavericks. That is pretty sweet right there. Not an autograph, but that's still pretty sweet. 
go ahead and get that top loaded no problem uh, fear not fear so Chris Fitz how was your weekend man I don't think I saw you at all yesterday got Spencer Doom with you with the Nets autograph Also disappointed the way my life has gone so far, uh, Chris Fitz. So you're not the only one uh, being disappointed on a regular basis. All right, we got Morris Wagner, Lakers autograph here. Um, Richard, good question. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, these boxes are from a loose case. I'm pretty sure they are uh, the last, like the last six boxes out of a case that uh, that we had got from our distributor uh, on a depot, 2018 Pacers. Actually, I lied. It is, like I said, it's not a fresh case, so it's not coming from a full case break. Um, I think Scott sent us the these the, the last of these boxes here. So that's why there's not a number four on eBay because it's not a complete case. We just had six loose boxes. Same here, Chris Fitz. You know, funny how that works. Same here. But uh, believe you me, I'm going to hit you something real, real nice in the future. It may not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But it will happen. Trust me on that. Every dog has his day. Jason Tatum, 99 Celtics. Right? Yeah, I was literally. I was, you know, it's funny you say that, Chris Fitz. I was just thinking that. I was gonna say you might have skunked. You might have skunked the contenders. But let NT come around. All right. Last box mojo here. Box number five. Last box mojo. So I was doing a little scouting report on Kyler Murray. I've seen a, I've seen some mock drafts. They have Miami picking him with the 13th pick. I don't know if I want Kyler Murray as my franchise quarterback, honestly. Not only is he undersized, but I, you know, just watching some of his highlights and just some game tape, like he he can throw. He throws a great deep ball. He's hella fast, but. You know he he's kind of he's kind of scary in the pocket. Uh, you know his, his first instinct. You know if 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 his first option isn't available, you know he's either gonna run or he's gonna throw the ball away. So that that's a little concerning for me. 
Because at, at the NFL level, you, you got to be able to read, go through your reads. You know, you got to go through your first option, your second, third, and you got to do it within seconds. And, 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 and I don't I don't think Kyler Murray has that. Um, Baker Mayfield had it when he was in college. You know, all, all the great quarterbacks have that in the college game. So it, it worries me that Kyler doesn't have that. Dude, Russell Wilson was a beast in college for Wisconsin. I remember watching him in college, and I was thinking, man, that guy's undersized, but that guy's a beast. Accurate, always makes the right decision, you know, for more often than not, makes the right decision, and he's a gamer. I don't, I don't necessarily know if, if Kyler Murray is of the same mold. I'm going to agree with Pats on this one. I'm not completely sold on Murray. If the Dolphins draft him, I'm afraid he's going to be like like Pat White from West Virginia years ago, who was a great college quarterback and lit it up, but came to the pros and just did not, did not translate. You know, I see people comparing him to Johnny Manziel, who was great in college, but didn't quite pan out in the pros. Jimmy Butler, 2018 Timberwolves. A lot of mock drafts have the kid from Ohio State uh, as the number one overall rated quarterback. Kyler Murray being the second. What's his name? I think Haskins or something like that. So we'll see. Gary Trent Jr. Blazers autograph. If I'm the Dolphins, I've, I've already read reports that they're looking towards the 2020 draft to find their quarterback. So if I'm the if I'm the Dolphins man, I'm not picking Kyler Murray with that 13th overall pick. You know, I, I would try to plug up, you know, other holes that we have. You know, maybe sign uh, a defensive. You know, maybe draft a line a defensive lineman. Or, or, or something like that. Kawhi Leonard, 189 Raptors. Right. I, well, I don't know if it's a bad QB class, but nobody like really pops out to me like, oh my god, like that's a franchise quarterback right there. Like nobody really gives me that sense. Demar Derozan, 2018 Raptors. Plus the best, the, the the best quarterback in college football might come out next year, and that is Trevor Lawrence for. Uh, for Clemson. I think that kid is just going to be disgusting at the next level. You know, Alabama's quarterback too, Tua Tagliova or whatever his name is, he's going to be really good in the pros, but he won't be coming out until next season, I think. So if I'm the Dolphins, you know, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a bit of an L this year. And uh, may, maybe even Tank. Yeah, right. The kid from Oregon is, is all right. But yeah, I don't know if I'm completely sold on that guy either. He's solid. But franchise quarterback? I don't know. Kevin Love, that guy, Cavs. At this point, honestly, man, as long as we don't have Tannehill. That's, that's really where I'm at right now. Anybody but Tannehill, or or as long as we have a quarterback, aside from what we have on the roster right now, Jason Tatum, 99 Celtics. I kind I kind of want to see what Luke Falk has. You know, I saw some highlights on Luke Falk, and of course they're highlights, you know, so they're only going to show the good stuff. But I was I was I liked what I seen from Luke Falk. I think we might, you know, we 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 should try to give him. A shot. I really would have liked to see the Dolphins have played him the last game of the season, but you know, whatever. Otis Birdsong, the Nets autograph right there, and that'll likely finish the break. I'll tank for Trevor Lawrence. Hell yeah. No problem. Dolphins have been garbage. For over 20 years, what's another year, you know? Anyway, that's going to do it for the break.
So let me see here. I do have doubles here for this one. Got Sixers and Timberwolves. So I'm going to give one to each. And I'm going to write all over the card. Alright, so you can remember me. Boom. So one each. And these have different teams on the left and right. So I'm going to random this. It's either going to go to the left side team or the right side team. I'm going to roll a die here. If I get an odd number, left side team. Even number, right side team. So that's odd left, even right. Here we go. Even right. So both are going to the Rockets because the Rockets are on the right side. So there you go. Boom, boom. And let's recap what we got here. So starting with our lowest number parallel, a Luka Doncic 5 of 25, Mavericks rookie card. That's pretty freaking sweet. And then we have autographs here. We got Otis Birdsong Nets, Gary Trent Jr. Blazers, Morris Wagner Lakers, Spencer Dinwiddie Nets, Alvin Adams Suns, Bruce Brown Pistons, Jaden Brunson Mavericks, D Brown Celtics, Isaiah Wright of Timberwolves, and Kyrie Thomas for the Pistons to finish the break. Thank you very much. We'll get it out to you.